Hi guys! So, if you're joining me for Lit Studies today, we are obviously reading Dragon Keeper. So, if you are accidentally watching this and you are in the other group, The Impossible Boy, feel free to enjoy this as well. But just so you know, my Lit Studies group, you are meant to be following along with this and making sure that you complete the tasks which will be shown at the end of this video. We're not going to be reading for too long today, but as you can see, I have a dragon onesie on. Okay, I've had this for many years now, but I thought, let's do something fun. And I also have my cup of tea, which actually has just water in it, and my slippers. So, if you are joining, make sure you get comfortable, just like I am, and I'm going to start reading. I'm going to go back just a little bit. And I know that there was a time where another teacher read our book for a little while. So I'm going to go back just a little bit because it's really important um, to why you're doing the Han Dynasty project. So we're still in chapter three and this is called the Imperial Banquet. And from where we last left off, the slave girl was sent to go into the big palace where Master Lan needed some more wine because he had run out. Okay, so that's all you really need to remember for now. Hopefully you can remember all the other parts of our story so that this makes sense. So anyway, let's start reading. The Emperor was the son of heaven, just one step away from being a god. The girl was sure he must know everything about her secret night visits to the palace, about the time she'd sat on the imperial bed about the dragon pickle. He'd chosen not to punish her for her previous crimes, but adding another seemed to be trying the imperial patience. She had no choice though. Lan was her mas master. She had to obey him. Go on, wretch, he shouted, herking an inkstone in her direction. He missed. She'd been inside the palace plenty of times before, but never in daylight. As she approached, she could feel eyes on her, the eyes of heaven. The girl ducked through the opening in the wisteria vine. For a brief time each spring, the wisteria was covered in purple flowers, but the rest of the time it was a tortured tangle of bare twigs. A path led to the jade flower hall. The wind chimes tinkled in the breeze, sounding like the dragon when, she, when he was happy. The girl didn't feel happy at all. She could see that the doors were painted with images of the two door gods. On the left was the pale face of the handsome Yu Li. On the right, his brother Shen Chu with a fierce red face and popping eyes. Shen Chu's door was hanging off its hinges. The slave girl pushed open the left door and stepped in. The afternoon light seeped in through the intricate latticed shutters of the six-sided windows. I wonder what that would look like. Maybe you could Google it. The palace looked dingy and neglected in the daylight. Huge dusty lanterns hung from the carved wooden ceiling. Narrow tables against the walls displayed delicately carved ornaments made entirely of green jade and draped with spider webs. Withered pot plants stood on the stone floor. The rat's nose was protruding from her jacket, sniffing the air. I'm glad you're here to keep me company, Hua. The girl walked through the hall to the doorway on the opposite side. This led to a large courtyard garden. Two bare trees and a pond of dark frozen water were all that were visible. The rest was covered with snow. There was a red and green pavilion that would have once been pretty, but the paint was now faded and peeling. Around the edge of the courtyard was a roofed walkway, open to the courtyard on one side. The supporting columns were carved with swirling clouds and also in need of paint. She made her way along the western corridor. The main palace building loomed in front of her, making her feel the size of a cicada, which is kind of like a grasshopper. 
The roof of the master land's house was so low she could almost touch it. Like up there. The palace roof reached to the sky. The corners turned up in elegant curves. On either end of the roof ridge was the carved head of a snarling dragon. As she gazed up, a sheet of melting snow slid off the roof, revealing curved terracotta tiles glazed shining black. The snow crashed at her feet. The polished doorway was huge, as big as an entire wall of Master Land's house and carved with long legged cranes. That's a type of bird, by the way. She didn't enter the doorway. She was sure the Emperor's wine wouldn't be in there. She walked around the main building and followed another covered walkway. A circular entrance appeared on her right. She stepped through and found herself in a passageway. On one of her earlier visits, she had stumbled across the darkened Imperial kitchens. That would be a sensible place to start looking for wine. The corridors were hung with faded silk wall hangings. Everywhere the girl looked, there were signs of neglect. Laoma did her best to keep the palace clean, but it was too big a job for one old woman. She constantly worked, but as soon as she turned her back on a clean on a cleaned room, the dust would settle again. It took Lao Ma weeks to work her way around the palace and back to where she started. The old woman's eyesight was poor. She couldn't see the spider webs draped over the lanterns or the dust collecting in corners. The gardener, the painter and the carpenter were less conscientious. They had long ago given up doing their work. The girl turned a corner and then another. She stood still. She had no idea where the kitchens were. The slave girl was beginning to think that a beating from her master would be better than offending heaven. When Lao Ma appeared at the other end of the corridor, she was waving her arms and wailing in the dialect of her home village. The slave girl couldn't understand a word of what she was saying. The old woman disappeared through a doorway. A group of men suddenly appeared around a corner. The slave girl stood and stared. There were more than 10 of them. She wondered if she was dreaming. Who were these men and where had they come from? The first two guards wearing short red tunics, trousers and leather vests. They were carrying two bladed spears. One blade struck straight out from the ha spear handle. The other was at a right angle to it. The other men were all wearing flowing silk robes with wide sleeves. There is a mosquito buzzing, buzzing around me. Off you go. Long colored ribbons fluttered from their waists. They wore winged headdresses. They strode toward the girl in step. One of them was banging a gong. She knew these men must be very important. Bow down before your emperor, shouted the man with the gong. The slave girl stood, frozen to the spot. The man with the gong was now close enough for her to see his long beard and his fiercely angled eyebrows. Bow down or you will be beheaded, slave, he shouted. The girl threw herself to the floor, lying flat on her stomach. The men marched past her, kicking dust into her eyes. She waited for them to pass, but heard the sounds of more footsteps approaching. Another person was coming along the corridor. She blinked the dust from her eyes and glimpsed one slippered foot and the hem of the most magnificent gown that she had ever seen. The fabric was shiny black satin. Characters and pictures of dragons were cunningly woven into the gold into it in gold threads. The dragon was slightly raised as if tiny drag sorry and is it as if tiny dragons were sewn into the fabric. The silk slipper was embroidered with fine stitching, also in gold forming spiral patterns that reminded the girl of high wispy clouds. Her heart was thumping so hard she thought it would burst through her chest. 
The wonderful hem and the beautiful slipper belonged to the emperor himself. He knew all about the crimes committed by his servants at Hyung Ling. He had personally come to witness their punishment. He had waited until they thought they had got away with their crimes to make the punishment more painful. Oh, time for a drink. The slave girl got to her feet and ran down several corridors trying to retrace her steps. Now that she wasn't looking for them, she found herself in the kitchens. The palace had suddenly come alive, like an animal waking from its winter sleep. The kitchen was full of shouting strangers. Servants were bringing in baskets and boxes. Fruit and vegetables were piled onto benches. Chickens and pheasants were strung on hooks. The girl had never seen so much food. Cooks unpacked knives and spoons from long chests. Kitchen hands lit stoves and heaved pots onto them. Get out of my way, girl! A large man carrying a side of beef almost knocked her off her feet. The front of her jacket started to wriggle. Be still, she whispered to the rat. I know it smells good in here, but we have to get out. The girl tried to go back out into the corridor, but a woman with a cleaver pushed her aside to give herself room to chop up six chickens. The girl was pushed and bumped and elbowed and knocked until she was jostled out of the room into another room. This room was twice as big as the jade flower hall, much quieter than the kitchen. There was no one in it except for a servant who was sweeping the floor. Several patterned rugs, a scattered of embroidered cushions and a lacquered folding screen were the only furnishings. The girl stood and stared at the craftsmanship in the screen. The bottom section was inlaid with mother of pearl, skillfully arranged to create a picture of a garden. The open lattice work at the top of the screen was carved into a pattern of birds and blossoms on twigs that were so fine she was just sure that she would snap them with just a touch. Lattice again. I think you might want to research that one and find out what it might be. She heard footsteps coming from another direction and the sound of the gong getting closer and closer. The servant hurried out of the room. The girl's legs trump trembled. Were there only two doors? One led to the crowded kitchen. At any moment, she was sure that the emperor would emerge through the other. There was only one place to hide. She managed to get her wobbly legs moving and ducked behind the carved screen. All right, so there are now a few activities I would really like it if you could do. All of them can be done on a Google Doc that you then just need to upload to Google Classroom. Okay, so the first one is there is a selection of five different words for you to look at. Okay, these words are dingy, loomed, elegant, neglect, and conscientious. Your second task is to summarize what had just happened in that text, okay? You can re-watch this video as many times as you like. The third activity is just a quick one. It doesn't need to be more than a page, okay? Is just to journal down what you think is going through the slave girl's thoughts, especially at this moment now when she's about to be cornered and captured. Who knows what will happen and what she would be thinking. And finally, this one's a bit challenging, okay? So, of course, there's not exact instructions in the text for how to do this, but give it your best shot anyway. It'll be interesting to see how people interpret what they have read, but the last task is to create a bird's eye view map of the palace. So if you re-watch this, there are certain times in the text where she says she walked down a western wall or followed the western wall. Also, it talks about if she was in the kitchen, where the exit and entrances are. So have a think about that and think about how you might draw that. A bird's eye view means if a bird was flying above and they looked down, what would it look like? So think of your house if a bird was flying over a house with the roof cut off. So you can see all the walls, you can see the doors, okay? And you can see the furniture on the inside and the floor. Okay, so just imagine they're looking through the ceiling. 
okay you if you draw your map you can just take a photo of it put it on the google doc and just upload one document okay if you need any help i will be online now so that you guys can ask me questions and ask for feedback remember you can do the private comment okay in this um, assignment or you can email me either way is totally fine okay i look forward to seeing your guys tasks if you finish this and you have nothing else to do either take a break get some lunch wait for our google meet very shortly or you're more than welcome to go and work on your Han Dynasty project. Most of our tasks will be just working on our Han Dynasty project, but I thought just to give, get you guys started and thinking about what we're reading, there's just some quick activities today. All right, see you guys soon.